Hello and welcome to DJ and TV. I'm Fly Robin, and with me is Howie Darkstar of Darkstar DJ Entertainment and Scott Carroll of Scott Carroll Entertainment. We're going to start out the show live tonight, and later, after we sign off, we're going to have a hangout in the chat room. So make sure you stick around because you never know what golden nuggets Howie and Scott may share. <laughs> Are you ready to share some of your wisdom tonight, Howie? I'll do my very best. Our first topic tonight is going to be taking care of your DJ gear. Scott, do you have any tips on taking care of your DJ gear? Well, it, it, besides keeping it clean, <laughs> that's one, <laughs> believe it or not, that's, that's important. That's important. Uh, keep it clean. You know, um, if you've got scrims, uh, make sure you keep them. I take mine and have them a lot of times professionally clean. They'll do them. They'll do them special for you and stuff like that. Believe it or not, that's that's one of the things I would say start out start out with um, and all. I would I would go into another one about cord management, but I'm gonna hold off on that one. But I will say uh, keeping your gear clean, uh, presentable. I I have something to add to that. When you uh, that's a very wise idea to have your if your scrims need cleaning, have them done professionally and have them fireproofed again. Because if you wash them, you've taken away the fireproofing and you will be liable if something happened. Yeah, that's something that they do with the dry clean. That's something I have. Yes. I have them read. Yes. I have them look. There's there's fire retardant on them. Mm -hmm. uh, please make sure that they're put back on there. And it, it yeah. can run costly, but it's well worth it. Yeah. It, it really is. <laughs> One of my big things about taking care of DJ gear is heat. People don't think about heat. They don't really take care of their equipment. They don't dust it out. They don't clean it out, vacuum it out. And they don't think about the ventilation and the air circulation around their gear. I seen a DJ the other day, it's just like he had everything so packed in there. And I'm thinking the stress on that circuit board in there, it's not getting ventilation, it's not keeping cool. You're you have to do that. You have to think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, vacuuming your stuff isn't that hard. <laughs> you yeah. know? A can of that air, a can of that air stuff. People used to laugh at me. I carry, I carry some in my bag. I carry some in my tool bag, and I use that, um, especially for the fans on the back of equipment lighting. But we don't think about our uh, our DMX lighting with those fans on them, and we have them sitting everywhere. And just a just a shoot little can of that air to hit it to make sure the dust gets free out of it too, Robin. How about that, Howie? Yeah, that's pretty well, good. One place you should not use compressed air is on a keyboard. Mm. That should be, like Robin said, vacuumed. They have those small vacuums. You vacuum that. And what I use, believe it or not, that works fantastic is a small uh, a paintbrush from like Michael's. And I'll, I'll go through the keyboard with hydrogen peroxide and it makes it nice and sparkly, looks good. And then when I do the inside of the computer, that's where I'll use the compressed air. Oh, okay, there you vacuum. go. Yeah, but yeah. as far as what the other stuff you were talking about, yeah, you're not gonna do damage there because there's no keyboards on, on like no. so. That's a good well, I concur. Talk about the keyboards, we're talking about laptops mainly. Yes. Yeah. And there's, no ventilation around your laptop if you lay it flat. If you have it flat, if you don't have that on a stand, and if you put it on one of those carpeted, uh, the carpeted, mm -hmm. you know, the controller cases, if you put it on that and you put it flat, you're cutting off the circulation. It's pulling in air from that, and it's the little exhaust is on the side of the laptop. Mm -hmm. and people are setting them flat, and then they're like, oh, it overheated. My, my laptop went bad. Well, I wonder why it went bad. It's because you didn't let it have any air. All electronics, especially ones with fans in them, need air. 
it needs some kind of air circulation and you have to vent it. So you really have to think about that. You can't just not keep them clean and ventilate them and keep that circulation. You're going to lose your gear. I had, a, really I had a situation happen to me at a um, ceremony one time, you know, Florida, Florida's got that heat. Mm -hmm. And um, I literally, I started using um, a laptop pad with the fans on them and that mm -hmm. helped a lot because that keeps that air circulating. You it lifts it up and I carry that you can slide it in your case and yeah, it runs off a of USB. I know that some of them, you can, I separate mine. I really don't run it through the computer. I have another USB that I power it up through, but you can power it up. Uh, that works perfectly. There's what, I think Howie, there's what, two or three of those little fans in there of those. And I know years ago we used them because the computers had the fans, the laptops had the fans on the bottom of them and they would get hot quick. Mm -hmm. It starts freezing up on you, you know, uh -oh, you better shut that thing down fast. I lost batteries that way in the laptops too. It would shorten mm -hmm. the life of the, uh, the battery um, as well. And I do that. That's the other thing I was going to mention too. Next uh, not next topic, but on, on your battery run that laptop on that battery every once in a while let it go completely down and then recharge it again don't keep that helps the battery too i know the new ones kind of don't need to do that but if i older one i used to do that so if you're running an older laptop too uh any comments on that what i what's happened with me and that was five years ago i believe i do a lot of uh summer picnics afternoon things and it, it gets pretty hot um i do a real big one in in august and and my main computer went down because i have uh, a pro x case with the sliding uh shelf on it for the laptop and it sits flat just like robin says and I'm out and it's, you know, 100 degrees and it shut down. I had to go right away to the backup. And since that day, I just, I got some, uh, some thin uh, square, uh, it, like dowel, they call it a baluster. And I, I painted them black and I, I put a little hook on the edge so it wouldn't, wouldn't slide. But I keep the laptop up about a half an inch. Hmm on the shelf itself so that there's room underneath there for for circulation and i haven't had a shutdown since i've been doing what robin suggested letting the computer breathe yes let, you breathe. let that computer breathe computers thing, need air too <laughs> yes they do one thing i've been doing to take care of my gear is using that new moat that ben came up with i love that little box <laughs> and i know it's kind of silly a lot of people are thinking oh this might be silly or whatever but i can go through all of my cables now i don't have as many cables as, as most people but i can go through all my cables before a gig or pile them when i have extras sometimes i just pile the suspected one maybe it's this cable and i'll replace it with another cable the other day I went through some of my suspected <laughs> cables that I thought were bad and right off the bat this HDMI cord it showed pin one bad and HDMI cords you know Howie they're really hard to see mm -hmm. you, you got to get in there well I have to use a magnifying glass mm -hmm. but pin one did not turn green it's that thing is that moat is so easy to use and pin one did not turn green so what i end up doing is taking a magnifying glass <laughs> there you go yeah i have i have some of those too but i yeah. just happen to have this uh <laughs> magnifying glass my son gave me that's a frog <laughs> and i zoomed in on that thing and i could see that little pin sticking out a little bit i took a little just a little uh screwdriver and I went in there and straightened it out, put it mm -hmm. back in the moat, green. Mm -hmm. Now, before, I would probably just throw it away because I could not see it good enough. And you don't know which wire it is. or Maybe it's this one or whatever. And I would probably throw it away. But I took a look at it because I knew it was pin one. That was pretty easy. And I saved me some money. I was happy about that. And all my other cables seemed to be good. I had one uh, 
what was that, the micro USB? I threw that out. <laughs> Have you used that yet, Scott? It's, it just, um, I just uh, virgined into the box. Oh, virgin into the box. <laughs> Interesting uh, wording there. Yeah, I just, uh, I just got into the box. I have been so busy, and I, I really haven't. I, I got to go get a nine volt. But uh, yeah, in fact, Ben told me to tell everybody hello um, when I was at uh, Arms DJs there in Orlando. He had, he he started out with about a dozen of these, and I think he had one or two left by the end of the day. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And uh, in fact, I had put, you know, I said, put me one aside. I'm over here. You better hurry and get up over here and get it, man. I've only got three left. And I'm like, and I walked over and I said, okay, wow. <laughs> write me up now. But yeah, he started up. I think he had, um, this moat is a great accessory for your tool, uh, for your tool bag, please get it robin to tell you i'm sure howie how you got yours too right mm, i yes. did <laughs> yes yes so what else do you have on taking care of our gear for us robin uh -huh.